Hey there, I'm Lee Rowley, and this is Lee After Dark. Why? Because there's more to being a business leader than just business. Each week, one brave entrepreneur ejects the elevator pitch and tells us about, well, whatever they want to talk about. Today, I have with me my new friend, Tyler Christensen. Tyler, how are you doing today? Doing great. How are you, Lee? I am doing fantastic. Thank you. Now, the rules are simple. For the next 20 minutes, we can discuss anything you want except your business. If you're successful, you'll have five minutes afterward to pitch all you want. But each time you mess up and talk about your business during the interview, you'll lose one minute of pitch time. Not really. I'm, I'm pretty loosey-goosey with that, but I have to say it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? Sounds good. Let's All right, it. great. Well, let's go ahead and start the timer then and go. What are we going to get into for the next 20 minutes? Well, I, you know, the one thing that I, I like to talk about, but I never have anyone to talk about is my kids and what Your I kids. do when I'm home um, because um, that time is so limited. Um, I think as, as business owners, um, especially small business owners, we just don't have enough time with our families and, and with our kids. And so I thought that would be a fun thing uh, to chat a little bit with you today. Okay. That, that sounds good. That sounds absolutely amazing. And I know that that's a, that's a thing with, uh, with a lot of entrepreneurs is that, you know, juggling that time and really getting in those, those great experiences and still, uh, you know, doing what you need to do is to grow as a business owner, right? Right. So, okay. Well, great. So uh, let's, let's start there. So uh, your kids, names and ages, let's start there. So we know what kind of reference point we're talking yeah. about. Um, so I have four kids. Uh, cool. My oldest okay. is Eli. He's 14. Uh, so in middle school and okay. then going down from him, we go boy, girl, boy, girl. So then we have Sharon at 11, uh, Spencer at nine and our baby is Claire, who's five. Is five. All right. Very good. So you've uh, probably relatively little peace and quiet in, in <laughs> yeah. your household, I would imagine, right? Well, we we keep pretty busy there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, so tell me about this. What's it like, uh, you know, being who you are and doing everything you do, and being a father to four wonderful children? Well, you know, it, it's it's been a wonderful challenge because. Um, we started having kids while we were still in school and I was in school for a long time. Um, I got three degrees and, and was in college for over a decade. And, and so starting to raise our, our family was, you know, we were just busy all the time and that was just the way it is. And so it's been learning to adjust to, to making time um, and prioritizing family and, and also just learning how to multitask and bring them into the business, bring them into the hobbies and the things that you're doing on the side. And so that's really been a challenge, but it's also been one of my favorite things in the world is, is to get the kids involved with different things. Oh, that is fantastic. So uh, do you have examples of, of how you bring them into your activities and what you're doing? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I, an easy example is I've started uh, publishing books lately. And when I was figuring this out for the first time and trying to um, self-publish and go through that process, my kids were interested in, in that how, how that all worked. And, and so I would talk them through it and say, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm learning about. Um, I took some online courses and did some things and, and shared with them what I was learning. And my 10-year-old, said, well, I want to write a book. And so she cranked it out. And last year, as a 10-year-old, she published her first book. Oh, wow. um, and I, I worked with her on it. And now, honestly, I didn't do much. I let her do all the work. And it, it wasn't as polished and edited as she probably would have liked. But we, we thought, let's, let's just crank this out and get it done. And so okay. it was really cool. That is awesome. What was it about? Um, hers was, it was a fantasy, um, going to another world and kind of, if you're familiar with Ender's Game, it actually had a similar premise to Ender's Game, mm, okay. um, where she went to this other, it, it's called Battle School. And, yeah. um, so she goes to this other world and she has to fight to keep her freedom and, and things like that. And there's two main characters that, that go and, and battle on this other world. So kind of a cute little story, um, and a, a great first attempt for a 10 year old. 
I don't know many 10 year olds who could say I published a book. Right. That's, that's freaking fantastic. So I'm, I'm assuming it's on Amazon and you know. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Deliver. Okay. Very cool. Um, if you can send me the link after we're, we're done with the recording, I'll include that in the show notes so people can go check it out if you sure. want. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, that's like, I'd be proud if I were you. So, I mean, yeah, that's, that's absolutely awesome. You got a 10 year old who has a book published. So I mean, we could just stop the interview right here and it would be great. But you know, that's, but, you know, that's the cool thing is when you bring your business home with you, um, kids love to do stuff that adults do. Right. And so like my wife, she builds custom furniture and my son, um, I, I'm not very mechanical or technical or anything. And in <laughs> fact, um, when it comes to supporting him and his hobbies and things like that, this is my older son. Um, I'm often at a loss cause I, I'm just, we don't have the same interests, but he's into welding and power tools and stuff. And right now he's has a mess out in the garage where he's trying to build his own little vending machine. And, and you know, that's where it's so fun is to bring those skills home and share it with your kids and work on things together. And they've helped with, you know, demolition projects in our home, knocking down walls and, and doing stuff like that. So I, that's one of the best parts about being a parent is being able to share kind of our interests as parents with our, our kids and letting them grow up, learning those skills and, and developing those interests. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So um, Eli, have you ever, I'm assuming you've probably take, you know, gotten involved with some of his projects and maybe even learned a thing from, or two from, from what he's doing too. Of course. You know, I, I was thinking about that on my drive to work this morning. And one of the coolest things uh, that has happened with Eli is he was really interested at a young age in science and inventing and stuff like that. And I have zero interest in that. And I was really struggling to know how to kind of support him as a father. And so I was thinking, well, what can I do? And, and Christmas was coming up one year. I thought, well, let me reach out. You know, I don't know a lot of people in this inventor's world or, you know, he was into rocket boosters and, you know, stuff like that. And so I went ahead and I spent one, just one afternoon. That's all it took. I just researched who are the kid inventors, who are the people who are inventing self-propelled rocket suits and, and stuff like that. You know, your Iron Man type stuff. Sure. And I, I, I looked up a bunch of people. I sent out like 10 emails to different people around the world and just said, hey, my son is into inventing. He wants to do cool stuff. I don't really know how to do anything on that. Do you have any advice for him? And that's all I did. Just this, this cold outreach to, to 10 or so people. Well, almost every single one of them wrote back or their organizations wrote back. And that year for Christmas, he had this huge box of just swag and pictures and inventors journals and diaries and, and everything that, you know, inventors aren't really celebrities. And so they were so excited to see that there was this seven or eight year old that was excited in their world. And they were this one guy that had invented a bunch of, you know, best selling kids toys. He wrote back like a four page. This is what I wish I'd known when I was eight and just wrote nice. it to my son. And, and, you know, I didn't have to be excited about inventing to be able to support my son in his excitement. You know, I just needed to do a little bit of outreach. Sure. That's really cool. And that's highly commendable, too, because I know for a lot of people, just doing that cold outreach would be so uh, intimidating, uh, especially when you are contacting people that are you know, outside of your field of expertise and you, you feel a little out of your depth, I'm sure. Uh, right. so, uh, you know, but just being able to like go, okay, you know what, in order to make this happen, uh, for my son, I'm going to do this. And, you know, I don't know if that's something that you do in your, in your business or not, but we can talk about that later, but you know, I mean, just being able to do that, uh, is a huge example, you know, and, and not only did you provide all this information and all these connections and resources and a great Christmas for your son. But you, know, you taught him the power of resourcefulness, uh, you know, which may not come out for, you know, another decade or so. Who knows? But uh, oh, no, we've already you know. seen that with him. He, yeah, he's very okay. comfortable reaching out to adults and to people who know things he doesn't know. So, in fact, yeah. he's working with a guy right now to restore a car because he approached the guy. He's like, hey, I, I see that you're you know, you have these cool cars in your garage. A friend of mine, of course. But he approached him independently and said, would you let me come on like as a, an apprentice or an intern and help you work on your car? And 
this friend of mine was so excited. He's sure, you know, and so they've arranged where he doesn't go over often, but he goes over and tinkers around in the garage with them from time to time. He's learning how to do stuff that I have zero interest in. And I'm thrilled that he's getting, you know, he, he took the initiative to do that. So I, I think we are seeing that payoff already, you know. Yeah, that's, that's excellent. And that means less worries down the road as a parent because you know that, that whatever he runs into or whatever he want to do, he's got it. Yeah. So that's really cool. I, I know a lot of people who uh, grow up being taught to be scared of others or scared to ask what you want. Um, I've seen several stories that I mean, some people have come through here uh, on this podcast and, and talked about struggling with that. So, not having that fear from an early age is a very, very powerful thing and highly commendable uh, that you've taken the time to to do that. Well, I hope it, I hope it stays with him and my other kids because honestly, that's something that I really struggled with as a kid. I'm a huge introvert hate talking to adults. Even today, I have a massive phobia of talking on the phone. And, you know, so I'm hoping that they'll get those skills early so they don't have to struggle all their lives like I have. So um, hopefully it pays off. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so other, other activities, lessons, uh, you know, vignettes that have been particularly important to you in, in the course of raising your children so far? Well, yeah, you know, each kid is different. And one of the cool things about having four children is they kind of balance each other out and we find out how they play an important role in our family and how the pieces all fit together. Um, but it also means that every kid has their own unique challenges. And, and it's been interesting juggling work life uh, because, you know, I'll, I'll get into a groove at work and things will be going really well and we'll be progressing. And then my, my youngest daughter, who has asthma will be in the hospital for a week and I'll need to go stay with her. And we have to adjust and we have to pivot and we have to make those concessions where if family's first, other things just go on hold. And, and actually, you know, that's a big reason why I'm here right now. My, my life has taken a major pivot in the last four or five years because of health problems that my kids have had. And so we've just been able to say, okay, I'm quitting my dream job and mm -hmm. we'll just figure it out. And I'm so glad that I was willing to, now, granted, I probably wouldn't have had the guts to do that on my own. My wife is my rock. And with her, we were able to say, okay, let's, let's just take this leap of faith and change our lives drastically and see how it goes. Um, but that's what you do uh, with your kids. And, and it sure has, has paid off for us just as far as our, our quality of life. We don't have riches and wealth and fame or anything like that, but, um, we have each other and that's been wonderful. Something is a lot more important. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So many people achieve their goals in terms of you know, career and wealth and so forth. And then they look at it and go, okay, but I'm still not happy. I'm still mm -hmm. not, I'm still not creating what I want in the world. Sure. Um, you know, so it's, it's important to understand that and to, to have that correct perception going in. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and again, having your wife support all of that is, is so huge, uh, you know, because it means that, you know, together, there's really nothing that you can't achieve or, you know, or provide for your family, you know, in terms of, you know, not even just various, but just experiences, uh, you know, just from talking to you for a few minutes, you have such a rich home life and such a rich family life. You know, uh, I'm sure there are struggles and challenges and, and everything, and, and especially with having, uh, you know, you're young with having health problems, you know, with the, with the asthma. Um, but you're actually there and present, you know, and I, I think that that's the, that's the word that it all comes down to is that I, so many people look back on their time with their children and they go, I wasn't really there. Right. Well, and honestly, part of the reason why I'm there is I had that experience. Um, okay. I, I, I remember, gee, going back maybe, um, well, to my son when he was born. So he's 14 now. So about 14 years ago, I was a full-time student and I was working full-time. So, you know, basically had two full-time jobs. Mm. And during that first year of his life, 
um, I got to the end of that year and I realized, uh, and I think I realized at once when my wife handed me my son and he started crying because I was holding him because he didn't know who I was mm. and he was afraid of me. And I realized that something has to change. I can't be absent in my son's life. And, and so we made a pivot at that time and I put some things on hold and, and readjusted my priorities, changed my schedules so that I could be home more. And it took a sacrifice and it, me it meant that I was in school a little longer. It meant that I wasn't, ha you know, fast tracked at work. Um, but yeah. making that change back then when it was most difficult, when we needed the money the most, when we needed to get ahead in life, being able to slow things down has definitely paid dividends in the long run. And so I'm really grateful that I had that experience. Um, you know, it stinks missing that first year of his life, but I didn't miss the first year of his sister's life or, or his, his other's brother. And so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm grateful that it, we went through that. Understood. Understood. Uh, you'd be grateful for the challenges as well as the victories mm -hmm. is absolutely critical to feeling like you've had a, a fulfilled life, I think. Sure. Uh, so uh, going back, though, I mean, even before that, I would think that you, know, you, you made excellent decisions that have, you know, have panned out very well for you and your family. Mm -hmm. uh, were, did you come from a big family? What was your own experience like? You know, I did. And it, fortunately, in many ways, my life has mirrored parts of my childhood. I, can't, I grew up okay. in a family of six children. <laughs> okay. Um, and my father, um, I never saw him in the morning. He was always gone to work before I woke up. And when he got home in the evening, unlike, and I didn't know this at the time, but you know, the traditional father might get home, open the newspaper, watch the television, things like that. Mm -hmm. My father, my whole experience with him growing up was as soon as he got home, he'd go to my mother and say, what do you need help with? And he'd go work in the garage or work in the yard or whatever. And if I wanted any quality time with my dad, it was working. And so, you know, that's my childhood growing up was working with my dad, working on projects around the house, working out in the yard. And he threw the ball around with me every once in a while. But really, if I wanted time with dad, it, it was out working on a project. And so and we didn't have a lot. We um, my parents weren't incredibly wealthy, you know, and with six kids, that's a lot of mouths to feed. So sure. I grew up without a lot of things. And and I'm grateful for that. But, you know, times have changed, too. I grew up in an era where if you wanted entertainment, you went to the park and played football with your friends and you didn't need adult supervision to do that. You just go to the park and play and go mm -hmm. explore in the mountains. And, and so I kind of had an idyllic childhood in that regards. And, and my kids live in a different world, but uh, you know, uh, kind of communicating that work ethic to my children. I hope I've been able to do that like my father and, and even things like um, heading off to work early so that I can spend time with them when I get home. That has been really important to me. That's why I wake up at four o'clock in the morning mm. is I, I need to take care of me and my needs early so that when I get home, I'm there for dinner every night. I spend quality time with each of my children. Um, I still read bedtime stories to my 14 year old, you know, and it's because my parents kind of set that precedent. So I'm, I'm really grateful for, to them for that. Excellent. So uh, I, I'm going to pick up on that area of it that you said you get up at four in the morning. And the reason I'm going to focus on that is because I do have parents say, you know, God, you know, I'd love to do this, but I don't have time, uh, right. you know, or I don't have the energy or I don't have this. I don't have that. What it all really comes down to is not taking care of yourself and meeting your own needs and trying to pull, uh, trying to tap an empty keg, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, so can you talk a little bit about like that morning experience? What is it that, that sustains you to be able to do all this for the rest of the day? Well, I, you know, I think at the root, it's, it's where your priorities are. And part of it came for me is because I did have outside interests. I wanted to start businesses. I wanted to do different things in my life. And the only way I could squeeze that in is if I woke up earlier. So I started, I'm not naturally a morning person, you know, growing okay. up, I hated waking up early. Um, but I started just making a priority to wake up 15 minutes earlier and then 15 minutes earlier. And I found that that's when I got the most things done. You don't have interruptions in the morning. And so 
taking advantage of that early morning time and just making that a daily habit has really served me well. But it's also, it's been nice because as I've been able to take care of things in the morning, I just don't take work home with me. When I'm home mm. with my kids, I don't have to worry about the other concerns from, from work or from my side projects because I've already worked on those. You know, I accomplish more before work starts in the morning than most people accomplish during work during the day. And so I can feel good, you know, at the beginning of my actual work day, um, knowing that I've already accomplished enough to feel good about that day. And then when I get home, that means I'm just there with my kids and I don't have to worry about those other things. Okay, cool. So it's more about clearing out distractions than some, yeah, you because know, I hear people all the time are like, oh, I get up and I meditate while I watch the sunrise and then I do the chakra balancing and you know, blah, 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 blah. I, I have to wonder if those people really do that every day because like I can do it like maybe once a week, but the rest of the mornings it's like roll out of bed, curse the skies, have a cup of coffee, maybe get a shower if I can fit it in and then just uh, what am I into today? You know, and, and it right. takes a while before I'm actually excited about it. So uh, I spent a lot of years, uh, beating myself up because I didn't have this idyllic routine that, you know, everybody else claims to have these, you know, gurus who are just, you know, like, Oh, mm -hmm. I've got my life together and nobody does, but yours, I mean, that to me is simple and realistic. I'm getting stuff out of the way so I can like have a better day. Yeah. It makes perfect well, sense. And you know, the funny thing is there are things during the day that I waste time with just like anyone else. Mm -hmm. And I get some of those out of the way too. So by doing email and social media early in the morning, then I, I just don't check email or, or social media at all during the day. Nice. Um, but I'm still, you know, seeing what my friends are doing as I hop on Facebook. I'm still communicating with people and it works out great because I was able to take care of that early, you know? Compartmentalizing email and social media. Social media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a huge challenge. It's a huge challenge for me. Uh, you know, so do you actually turn your, like, like, the notifications off for the rest of the day or? Yeah, actually okay. on my phone, I, I don't have any notifications for anything. I've, I've disabled all <laughs> notifications you. on my phone. And then, so we haven't talked about what I do, but during my day, I'm still, a, I'm a school teacher. You see, um, I know your audience can't see, but um, you can see I'm in my classroom right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and during the day, I don't have access to anything because I'm with my students anyways. And so I don't want any distractions or anything like that. Good. Um, but great. even after my school day, when I go to my other jobs and, and work on that, I keep everything t turned off. I just don't need it during the day. I, I have to batch. And so I, when I'm, you know, in me email, that's all I'm doing. When I'm in social media, that's all I'm doing. So. I, ha I have to do it that way. You've definitely thrown down the gauntlet for those of us who are still struggling with that. So I, I, I had definitely, that's awesome. Uh, and uh, you know, what else is awesome is that you have successfully completed the Lee after dark 20 minute challenge. Can you believe that? It didn't even feel like 20 minutes, did it? Right? No, it didn't. Yeah, no, it's great. And I, I honestly, I, I know there's a lot more that we could, could fit in, but I want to keep my promise to you. Uh, you successfully completed the challenge. So five minutes on the clock and you can tell us about, you know, your business, what you're working on, where people can contact you, whatever you want, man. The floor is yours. Sure. Well, this is kind of fun because we didn't talk about any of the things I've been on lots of podcasts, but, um, I've never talked about my kids or yeah. any of these things that we've talked about. Um, so let me give you the one minute rundown on who I am and what okay. I do. Um, so you see that I'm here in school, and I alluded to this earlier, my mm -hmm. shift in life. I was a professor for 10 years teaching in teacher education, and then we moved across the country, and I didn't get hired as a professor. Um, I was kind of surprised by that, but I'm in a small town, so limited job opportunities. So I went back to school, and I'm teaching fifth grade right now, um, which never been in an elementary school teaching position before, but I love it. It's been quite the adjustment and change for me, but... I'm going on my third year here in fifth grade, and, and that's my day job. So okay. I do that during the day. Now, on the, in the night and on the side, I have a lot of hustles. Um, I'm a public speaker. I'm an um, author. I have a few books out. I, have, um, I run a web design business for celebrities. I'm not taking on any new clients because that's one of the ones that's kind of falling by the wayside. 
Um, but that has been a cool opportunity to work with some actors and professional athletes on, on their websites. Um, I do product reviews online and there's probably some more stuff in there. I've, oh, and last year I lost a hundred pounds. So, um, oh, wow. it's, it's been a good year for me. Um, and, and obviously I, I keep busy. So as we talk about that, you know, the morning and how important that is to me, you know, that's how, oh, the other thing, and actually this got me started in the early morning is I'm a sports writer. So I, I do wake up um, early to, to blog and, and to, so I have my own recruiting blog, but now I also write for the largest newspaper in my state and, and do other writing um, as a sports writer. So that's been a fun thing on the side. It doesn't take a lot of time now, but it did five, six years ago when I was getting into that. So lots of fun stuff going on. Whew. Ah, you make me tired just hearing about it, man. <laughs> no, it's good. That is fantastic. I absolutely love that. So how can people get in touch with you uh, to find out more or work with you or just, you know? Yeah, you know, so I don't really have much to pitch right now. I do have a book coming out next month. It's called Unlocking the Power of Transformation. And it mostly focuses on my, my journey of, in losing weight and dealing with food addiction and, okay. and stuff like that. Um, and so I'm excited about that. But it also has some of my business stories in it because the, the steps that I found that lead to transformation, they transfer across different areas, health and, and business and, and things like that. So that will be coming out. And if you want more information on that, you can just go to my website. Um, it's tylerchristensen.com. That's T Y L E R. C-H-R-I-S-T-E-N-S-E-N. -E -E it's a long name. That's why my students call me Mr. C. <laughs> but TylerChristensen.com. And, and that's where you can see what I'm up to. If you want to hire me as a speaker, um, I do high school assemblies and stuff like that and teacher professional development. Uh, and so that's kind of where that is. And as far as a pitch fest goes, the only cool thing that I'm working on now, so this is my 2020 project. So it's in beta. Um, but as a teacher, I'm developing a bunch of resources for teachers. So I have a new website that will be launching called Elementary Teacher Tips. And if you're a teacher out there listening to this and you'd like to get involved with that website and submit a tip and, and share ideas with other teachers on how to have more success in your classroom, how to work less, that's something that's important to me is uh, being efficient with your time so you have more time with your kids at home and, and other things. Um, that would be really cool to check out that elementaryteachertips.com. And then, um, yeah, just that, that's probably the best way to contact me is through my websites. Great, great. Okay, so tylerchristensen.com and elementaryteachertips.com, I'm thinking. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then your book, Nick's book is Unlocking the Power of Transformation. And do you have a, a release date on that or is it? Just... Yeah, I do. That's okay. coming out on Thanksgiving. Okay. So, um, it's, it's my gift I, to myself. I, I've always wanted to record my own stories. Uh, and so it's kind of a, a, a bit of a memoir almost. Um, okay. But I'm releasing that on Thanksgiving Day. Really cool. So we'll put all these links in the show notes so that uh, our listeners can, can go check that out. And uh, then when your book comes out on Thanksgiving, uh, I know they'll be checking it out as will I. Uh, so thank you for sharing with that. And, and thank you so much for sharing about your family. I know this is kind of a different thing, but you know, I, I really appreciate people who just step up and go, yeah, okay. I don't mind uh, stepping away from the script. I'll, uh, I'll talk about something else. So Thank you very much for the for the tips and insights you've shared. We've really enjoyed it, and I know that our listeners are going to enjoy it as well. My pleasure. So, really fun format here, Lee. Love I, it. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. I've had a blast with it. So, uh, you know, I've, I've, and I've never had anybody tell me it was a complete waste of time. So, you know, that's a plus <laughs> too. So, yeah. all right, guys, we are out of time. If you found Lee After Dark more entertaining and relevant than most of the drac out there, Give our hosts over at ipmnation.com some love or subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, iTunes, wherever the heck else we put this show. This is Lee Rowley with my new friend, Tyler Christensen. Until next time, be present and be well. <laughs>